Hello and welcome today. Uh, if we've not met before, my name is Josh. Um, I'm part of the team here at Kerith as the production manager across all of our sites. Um, now, if you've joined us over the last month or so, you will know that we've been in our summer series, Summer Stories. And we've been looking at some of the slightly weirder stories in the Old Testament. Now, we've had some pretty strange ones so far. We've had uh, tent pegs being plunged into people's heads. We've had bears coming and eating groups of people. And uh, let me warn you, today's story is no less strange. Now, today we're going to be looking at a bizarre encounter that a man named Balaam had with God. But first, before we get into that, let me ask you a question. Are you willing to be disrupted by God? Are you willing to be disrupted by God? Um, let me tell you a bit of a story about a time that I think I was disrupted by God. I was about 17 years old um, and I was studying in Guildford at the time and I'd just been on my lunch break and got myself a KFC and I was buzzing. I was absolutely buzzing. I'd bought myself a wrap and some chips and a drink and I was walking down the high street and uh, as I was walking, I saw a homeless man off to my left. And I really, really felt something in my spirit prompt me, Josh, you need to give that man your food. And I'm not proud of this, but I walked and I walked straight past the man. And then I felt again in my spirit something say, Josh, you need to give your food to that man. So I awkwardly kind of turned around and came a couple of paces back and I pulled out the chips from my bag and uh, said to the man, I would really like you to have these. And he said, no. I don't want your food, have you got any cash? And I said, I'm really sorry, I don't have any cash, but I really want you to have these. So I gave him my chips and he picked them up and he threw them back at my face. And I didn't know what to do, so awkward 17 year old Josh just walked off. Now you might be listening to this and you might be going, well Josh, God did tell you to give him your food and all you did was took out your chips. I know I wasn't fully obedient, but it was a start for me. But my point is, God disrupted me in my day to day. And today we're going to be reading about Balaam who had this bizarre encounter with God. Now, some context to kind of help us understand where we are in the Bible before we plunge into the story. So uh, we're in the book of Numbers. Um, God has just set the Israelites free. Um, they are in exile and they have come out of Egypt. And the Israelites have been traveling through the land uh, and they've been taking over various cities. Now, they're coming near to a city called Moab. Moab had a king at the time uh, called King Balak. And Balak heard about the Israelites, God's people, and how they were taking over all these cities. And he was scared. He didn't want Moab to be taken over. So Balak sent a message to Balaam. Now, Balaam was a prophet of the time. His job was to go to people and send blessings or curses. Uh, we know that because in verse six, when Balak is giving his address to Balaam, he says, for I know that whoever you bless is blessed and whoever you curse is cursed. So Balak went and he sent some elders to Balaam to send orders to him to go and curse the people of Israel to warn them not to come to Moab. So when the elders got there, they carried the message to Balaam and Balaam said, hold on a minute first, I need to go and meet with God and see what he has to say about this. So he went, he met with God and God came to him. And in verse 12, we read, he said, God said to Balaam, do not go with them. You must not put a curse on those people because they are blessed. So in response, Balaam says to the officials in 13, go back to your own country for the Lord has refused to let me go. Now, this is where we start to see some of Balaam's mistakes appearing. Do you notice Balaam didn't fully tell the officials what God said to him? Now, God told him two things. One, do not go with them. And two, do not put a curse on them for they are blessed. But instead, Balaam just said, no, I'm sorry, God told me I can't go. He didn't fully obey. Now, the officials went back to Balak and told him of this and Balak sent the officials back to Balaam with an offer. He said, look, I will give you riches. I will make you wealthy if you go and put this curse on these people. And when the men come back to Balaam, Balaam says to them in verse 18, 
Even if Balak gave me all the silver and gold in his palace, I could not do anything, great or small, to go beyond the commandment of the Lord my God. And we read this and we're like, yes, well done, Balaam. You have made the right choice. But straight away in verse 19, straight after he said this, he says, now, spend the night here so I can find out what else the Lord will tell me. Suddenly we're in this position where we're like, God has come to Balaam and said, do not go. Now Balaam has received an offer and he says, let me just see if I can change God's mind. Now, I wonder how many times in your life have you tried to weave God into your plan rather than following God's will for you? Just like with my KFC, God clearly told me, uh, give your food to that man. But instead, I took the chips, which if I'm honest, were the bit that I cared about the least. And I just grabbed them out and tried to give them to this man. I was trying to fit God's will into my way rather than fully submitting to his way. So we move on with the story. Balaam does go and he asks God again. And God says, fine, go with them, but do only as I say. And now this brings us up to verse 21. And we're going to watch a little video now, which acts out what is happening in this verse. Hi, I'm Michael from Ministry Art. I'm going to attempt to act out this passage from Numbers 22 so you can really picture what it might have been like to be there at the time. Enjoy! <coughs> Numbers 22, verse 21 to 35. So the next morning, Balaam got up, saddled his donkey, and started off with the Moabite officials. But God was angry that Balaam was going, so he sent the angel of the Lord to stand in the road to block his way. As Balaam and two servants were riding along, Balaam's donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with a drawn sword in his hand. The donkey bolted off the road into a field, but Balaam beat it and turned it back onto the road. Then the angel of the Lord stood at a place where the road narrowed between two vineyard walls. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, it tried to squeeze by and crushed Balaam's foot against the wall. So Balaam beat the donkey again. Then the angel of the Lord moved farther down the road and stood in a place too narrow for the donkey to get by at all. This time, when the donkey saw the angel, it lay down under Balaam. In a fit of rage, Balaam beat the animal again with his staff. Then the Lord gave the donkey the ability to speak. What have I done to you that deserves your beating me three times? It asked Balaam. You have made me look like a fool! Balaam shouted. If I had a sword with me, I would kill you. But I am the same donkey you have ridden all your life. The donkey answered. Have I ever done anything like this before? Well, well no, Balaam admitted. Then the Lord opened Balaam's eyes and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the roadway with a drawn sword in his <coughs> hand. Balaam bowed his head and <laughs> fell face down on the ground before him. Why did you beat your donkey those three times? The angel of the Lord demanded. Look! I have come to block your way because you're stubbornly resisting me. Three times the donkey saw me and shied away. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have certainly killed you by now and spared the donkey. Then Balaam confessed to the angel of the Lord. Lord, I have sinned. I didn't realise you were standing in the road to block my way. I, uh, I will return home if you are against my going. But the angel of the Lord told Balaam. <laughs> Go with these men, but say only what I tell you to say. Okay. So Balaam went on with Balak's officials. <laughs> are, Good donkey. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> so has anyone here ever been on a journey, had an angel stand in their way, and then had a donkey start speaking to them? I can tell you for sure this has never happened to me. And uh, let me tell you as well, Bible scholars and theologians have been studying this passage meticulously for hundreds of years now. And they've come to the conclusion that they think the talking donkey in this passage probably looks something a bit like this. Now, I'm joking, of course, it's not donkey from Shrek. But in this story, we're seeing a great example of how God would go to great lengths to speak to us and get our attention. Now, God knew Balaam's heart here. 
He knew that he was on this journey without fully accepting his will. And actually, later on in the story, in the chapters to come in Numbers, we read that Balaam was actually the one who helped Balak lead the Israelites, God's people, into sin and turning away from God. He found a way to get his reward from Balak without having to curse the people of Israel, uh, but ultimately not doing God's will and leading the Israelites into sin. And God knew Balaam's heart right before all of this happened in this passage that we're reading now. And God was clearly trying to get Balaam's attention. He put an angel in his way three times and then made a donkey talk to speak to him to get his attention. How often are we so focused on our own agenda that we miss what God is doing right in front of us? God today wants to call us out of our day to day. He wants to grab our attention and for us to see what he is doing and to follow his perfect will. In the Bible, we read time and time again of how God calls us out of our ordinary, calls us out of our day to day to follow his will for his perfect plan. In the New Testament, in the book of Matthew, we read about when Jesus is walking and he spots two brothers fishing and Jesus speaks to them and he says, come, follow me. I will send you out to fish for people. And at once they left their nets and followed him. Here we can see a clear example of how God extends the call to us to leave our plans and follow his perfect and good way. We see it countless times, like with King David in the Old Testament, a young shepherd boy called out of his ordinary into defeating a giant and ultimately becoming king. David had to leave behind what he knew to follow God's perfect will. And God's plan is always greater than our own. But sometimes we get so caught up in our every day, in our coming and our going, that we forget to look up and see what God has got right in front of us. God is calling us to listen, but also to obey his voice. In the story that we just read, Balaam was fantastic at listening to God. He did that a couple of times, but he didn't fully obey. And when he went out on his journey, he failed to see what God was trying to do right in front of him. So I want to ask you today, where is God trying to get your attention? How is God trying to speak to you? And where might he be calling you? Now, we're going to watch a quick little video now, which is going to help us with how we can actively and properly listen to God. Hi, my name is Tom and I want to show you today what it's like to listen to God. When God has our attention, he wants us to listen. Now there are three different ways that we can listen and these objects will help us work out which way we listen. Now this is a funnel, but watch how the water goes right through. The funnel is empty now, so that, so that can be like us when we listen to God. We hear what he says, but then forget pretty quickly. So here we have a sieve. Sieves are great for getting rid of lumps when sieving flour. When we listen to God, sometimes we like the sieve and just want to listen to the parts that we want to hear. Now my last object is a sponge. Sponges are great at soaking things up. Look what happens when I put the sponge in the water. The sponge absorbs it all. That's what we need to do when we listen to God. He wants us to not only listen, but soak up everything he has to say. And keep hold of it just like the sponge is holding onto the water. So what could you do this week to be like a sponge listening to God's voice? So I want to give us space today to do just that, to listen to God. I wonder what is God saying to you today? 
What is God calling you out of or what is God calling you into? Maybe God is calling you to simply say yes to him. Maybe he's calling you to let go of an unhealthy relationship. Maybe God is calling you to take up that new hobby that you have been longing to start for so long. Maybe it's to contact that old friend who you've lost contact with. Maybe it's to be generous to someone that you don't know or someone in your life. Maybe it's to pursue that new job or career that God is asking you to pursue. Or maybe it's to simply sit and spend time in his presence. So let me pray for us today as we take this time. God, we submit ourselves to you once again. God, we accept your call over our life. God, we thank you that you are desperate to be in relationship with us. We thank you that you would go to great lengths to grab our attention and to speak to us. And Father, we want to be a people that not only listen, but obey your command. So Father, I ask for every single person watching this today, come and speak to them, whether it be in a small whisper or whether it be in a loud action. God, come and meet every single person here today. And Father, we take this moment to just say yes to you again. We say yes to your call on our life. We admit that our will is not perfect and we acknowledge that your way is better and your way is perfect. And Father, we offer ourselves again to you today and we ask, come and have your way in our life. Help us to put down to the side the things that we let get in the way of hearing from you. Come and meet with us once again. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.